Hey guys, we're back with another episode of the Allie and Dan podcast, and we're your hosts, Allie and Dan. Welcome back, everybody. I'm exhausted. How are you? Yeah, we've had a super full day on top of a full day yesterday and lots of traveling. So so many full days. I am thinking about my macadamia nut milkshake later. <laughs> One of my favorite ice cream brands here in Hawaii, which is where we're coming to you guys live from, yeah, is uh, Roselani, and they make an amazing vanilla macadamia nut ice cream, and we have a thing of it in the freezer, and so I'm going to be getting into that. I don't know if you guys can pick it up on the on the mics, probably not, but we are in the thick of the jungle. Total, <laughs> there are... I don't know how many species of frogs going wild outside along with crickets and I don't know. I think the birds come out in the morning, but it is it's crazy. total jungle noises here. Yeah, I feel like we're in the middle of the jungle and I guess technically we are. We are, yeah. Guys, tonight Allie, Allie, while I cooked dinner, Allie got our topics ready. So <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. Well, we had kind of thought of a few things, and we got a really good suggestion last week. Right. Somebody in the van fam threw out a pretty solid suggestion. We always we always value the opinion of our van fam. I think that's what maybe what sets us apart from other vloggers. It's Not possible. really. <laughs> or other podcasters. We're po- we're what are we? Podcast now? What are we? We're trying it all out. We're just trying to be... Uh, flexible and trying to see what works our shorts get mixed reviews (laughs) from us included (laughs) well my favorite uh comment i was was these shorts are getting old and a wonderful van fam of ours denise gonna give her a shout out writes don't watch them (laughs) it's It's that simple simple. (laughs) pretty simple she's she's very right like a lot of people are i've seen a lot of unknown viewers people that i don't recognize commenting on the pranks one from the airport as if like any of those (laughs) were actually real i feel like people have a hard time separating like (laughs) jokes from reality sometimes we laughed so hard making that one that it actually doesn't really matter if other people like it because we had fun i'm sure the van fam enjoyed it yeah but yeah we were there was one scene where ali's like there's two they were just probably like basic guys they were not airport security they They were were just just wearing like they could have been like baggage handlers for all we know like i i have no idea and for the uh for the one where i where she left my bags unattended prank which is like the worst prank in the world i just went and stood next to it walked next to him for like maybe four seconds and ali recorded it and that's we use that for the basis of that that third prank and so i think some people might be like oh my god he actually got t- escorted away by <laughs> airport security because she left his bag unattended. Uh, that's, that's the way the internet works these We're days. We're just idiots, being idiots, having fun, entertaining <clears throat> ourselves. So right. I have right. a, I tell you, I don't know if I've discussed this before, but I get bit any anywhere we are. I get, I'll get bug bites. Dan might not. I haven't it, even seen a bug yet. There are some people in this world who just. It's like their blood type, which I don't know my blood type, but they just get bit more than others. And I I am one of them, and my leg is just on fire. And I, I mean, don't even know where and when I got yeah, bit. I haven't even, literally, guys, I haven't even seen a bug. So I don't know how that's possible, but I'm looking at a bug bite. So that's, Multiple. you're not lying. You also have big fat cankles. What's going on? <laughs> so... <clears throat> I think a lot of people can get this while flying is like fat ankles. Well, I think, and I get them, but they go down and I usually have like, this is weird to say because who thinks about their ankles, you do. but like shapely ankles and they are fat right now. Well, I mean like you have they're nice bony ankles. ankles. You have nice feet. We've thought about doing a f- like more feet stuff in our vlog, but we haven't gotten to it yet. <laughs> But yeah, you, no, well, you let do us have, know if you guys want to see that. <laughs> you do have uh, nice, you you do have shapely ankles, I'll say that. Well, I did, but now they're they're still fat. They've gone down, but anyways, then we went on a super hot hike today, and 
my the swelling in my ankles just hasn't really come back down to normal. And a friend of mine just had a baby like yesterday and her feet are really swollen. So I'm a little nervous that my feet might not go back down for a while, but it's okay. Well, hey, speaking of fat, how have I been looking lately? I think you've been looking good. How have you been feeling? Fat. <laughs> Seriously. Well, your I feel like your appetite calmed down a bit and I felt like it came back. With a vengeance. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think in McCall, where we were staying for our house set for 30 days, I was so eager to do baking. I don't know. I had the, I got, I'm so over like kitchen stuff right now. I don't even oh. want to be involved in the kitchen. I just want to eat simply. And yeah, I don't want to bake frosted cookies. I don't want to <laughs> bake snickerdoodles. You overdid it. <laughs> I overdid it. But it kind of does that with a, a subject or an activity or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, but that kind of, yeah, that's how we've been feeling, guys. We've been just kind of like going to bed at 7 or 8 o'clock Hawaii time, waking up at 5, 6 a.m. and trying to do stuff in the morning. And then we go out for the day and have been looking at a ton of properties. Um, for me right now, it's totally up in the air. I mean, this trip was totally necessary where we're staying is fantastic, but to to live here and to build here would be quite difficult. There's other properties that we've seen that are in really nice subdivisions, but they're in a lava zone. You're going to see these on some of the up- upcoming episodes, so we don't want to like go over the whole thing twice. But there's just so much to consider on this island. Um, there really is yeah. a lot to consider, and there is no way we could have known. I mean, yeah. even to go see what the ocean looks like, where the grocery stores are, the paved versus unpaved roads. That's the big and one. And sometimes paved roads are like just gravel and fine, and sometimes they're absolute yeah. junk shows. So it's just it's too hard to determine all of that without coming yeah <clears throat> and get a vibe of the place you know you can't you can't find that in photos and we have liked stuff. the vibe we have liked the vibe you'll see that in some of the episodes coming up um but yeah we're, we're still in the thick of it i mean we're halfway through our vacation it's a very it's not even a vacation really it's a very short trip with a specific purpose and we're we're getting a lot of answers on that um so yeah, we'll see what we'll see what comes of it, but I think, you know, we're kind of setting course on the direction we want to head in our life. And sometimes, you know, doing vlogging or doing I mean, vlogging especially is is I find it to be quite challenging unless like, I mean, unless you're just getting everything's going your way, you know, in life, that's always a good thing, but in vlogging, you know, there's a lot of ups and downs. There's a lot of ups and downs. So we're trying to set the course on our life in a way that we think is going to be entertaining for other people to watch as well as fulfilling for us to actually live. Because you kind of have to find that balance of what do I want to create with our vlog? You know, because I have to enjoy creating it. You have to enjoy creating it, but we also have to have people that enjoy watching it. And so... For sure. We'll and see we, where that goes. <laughs> well, we do have a handful, not a handful, more than a handful. Well, we do have a good audience so far. We, yeah. we do need it to grow to be able to, uh, you know, not go into the workforce, continue. the yeah. nine to five workforce. Yeah. Which we've both been in. Um, Speaking so. of. Should we? Sure. Okay. So we wanted someone, like you mentioned, said we should talk about our past lives. I believe before it was we met. Michaela. Was Walker. it? Walker. Oh, yeah. I, I think you're wrong, right. No, I believe you're right. I, I believe you're right. I think it was her. Guys, if you didn't know, we read all your comments. We do. We love them. We, we really dwell on the negative ones, but we read <laughs> them all. <laughs> no, we don't. Some of them are just make us laugh, but. Um, Some of them cut to the heart and hurt they sting (laughs) so if you're that person keep it up (laughs) you're you're winning (laughs) no some of them in the beginning i had to not read because they were so mean but we were also getting like a lot of comments because that was during the gabby petito stuff so if you're getting that much traction you you're gonna get tons and we didn't know what we were all over i didn't know how to shoot i mean if i could have if i know now how to shoot a vlog and I feel like I still don't really know that well, but 
I would have, we could have done such a better job. So anyways, people that uh, watch us now found us, a lot of them found us through that and they appreciate our work. So that's good enough for me. But um, we, we did get that comment about us sharing about where we were in life before we met. Yeah. Cause a lot of you have heard the story of how we met down in Baja and Dan's um, initial approach approach and hot. <laughs> and basically how life just came immediately together following baby on the way <laughs> baby on the way maybe we're moving a little weeks. quicker than some people but you know well, it's okay i don't know um and so yeah it's quite interesting what we were both up to before we started this life together and obviously this podcast, which is now, or excuse me. Smash that like button on the old podcast, Aruni, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> or this, the whole YouTube journey, which has been going on for a year now. Yeah. Um, yeah. We should tell that story because it's, I, you know, it's not, I'm not going to say it's like the wildest story, but I, I did. Should I go first or do you want to yeah, go first? Yeah, go for it. Okay. My story is a bit more interesting. So, um, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, well, I guess... The brief version. I don't want. To, we don't want to like dwell too much, like go too into too many details. But I graduated from Oregon State with a degree in construction engineering in 2010. Five year program. Shout out student loan debt. Shout out um, mine was paid off before the they started paying other people's off. By the way, <laughs> same with me. <laughs> Bummer. Uh, anyways, I graduated in 2010 and. I went into construction. I kind of bounced around between jobs for a couple of years. And then in like 2012, I got a job at Intel as a green badge, which means I wasn't an Intel employee. And I worked there for in the semiconductor building out basically huge fabrication rooms that make computer chips. And I did that at Intel for a few years. And then I got a really, really sweet job offer in New York where I lived in upstate New York. I might have I probably mentioned that a few times on the vlog. I lived up there for a year, made a ton of money. I wish I could have, I wish I, it's like so crazy. I wish I had, I'm at the point in my life where I wish, where I just know now what I want to do with my money and where I want to put it, but I just <laughs> need to get the, the uh, flow of it figured out a little bit better. But anyways, um, I then came back to Oregon, worked for another year, and then I quit the constr I got so fed up with the construction industry in like 2016 that I was just like, I just don't want to work here anymore. Like the construction industry, it's like people brag about l working long hours on a salary where they don't make extra money for working more. And I was like, I've always been really efficient. So I worked really efficiently so I could do my job in like a couple hours a day and like I would take naps on the job. I would just, I was like, I don't have anything to do. And like, I feel tired after lunch. So I'm going to go take, I would take an hour long nap every day after lunch. Where? <laughs> I had this little spot, like on the, on the campus, there was like so many places to go nap. And I like carved out this little area that no one ever found me because I was basically sleeping on a bunch of around, around a bunch of like spare boxes and parts and stuff like in the deep in this basement. <laughs> <laughs> it was cr psychotic almost how, how diligent I was about finding a good nap spot. But anyways, um, I just wasn't challenged and I was like, am I going to do this? I was making as much or more than guys that have been doing it for 20 years because I had negotiated a really sweet deal to come back to Intel from New York. So, but I was just like, it's just so crazy. Like you don't, you know, like money for me, I was making great money, but I was so unfulfilled that I was like, I don't even care about this. And I just need to do something where I'm my own boss. And I've always felt that way. Even like before I was in, like when I was in college, I'm like, what am I doing? I don't ever want to like get out of here with a stupid construction degree, you know, after having an internship and being like, is this really what I want to do with my life? So then I quit. Construction engineering degree. Yeah, construction engineering, which is basically like, there's a lot of like scheduling. I wasn't like an engineer. I didn't have an engineering license. I never want, that's even more my nightmare. But at the time in the, the 2000, before the 08 stuff happened where the economy went to crap, people in the construction out in my program at Oregon State were coming out with huge job offers. So that's why I did it. Well, I, the only reason I made that distinction is because 
Dan never lifted a hammer at work. I don't know how to actually build construct anything. <laughs> but you were calling it construct, so I just didn't. I wanted you to want to clarify, sure and that was you want to just emasculate me in front of the van fam. <laughs> No, you know, I'm just, the first to just tell you. Be real. I'm the first, to, but I mean, I, no, I did learn some valuable skills. Like I, I can read plans. I can, I can understand a lot of stuff. It's just like constructability will definitely be. Um, I wish I paid more attention because constructability will be an issue. But I, I mean, I met so many electricians, pipe fitters, carpenters, all this stuff, and I wish I picked their brain more for what I was going to do down the road. But. Um, anyways, then I started my own, I quit and somehow I just like f- stumbled into this really, really good idea of how to start a social media marketing company. And it wasn't like a proper company. It was just like me working with like, but I had like hundreds of clients and I did like hundreds of thousands of dollars over a couple of years in revenue, um, with like super high profit margins, like 80, 90% profit margins. So it was a really sweet business. It, I was making as much doing that as I was at Intel, but um, it's a lot harder. You know, you got to manage your money better. You don't have like people taking taxes out, so you got to like do all these different things. So I actually learned a lot about taxes and stuff like that during my thing, my stint as a digital media thing company. Entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I've always been good at sales, so it's like kind of easy for me to, it was kind of easy for me to build that. But then I just got burnt out and as well, Instagram, it was an Instagram marketing thing and Instagram kind of changed to the point where it didn't really work anymore what I was doing because I was using software to grow people's accounts. It was like pretty greasy, but very lucrative. (laughs) So then I, um, then I quit and kind of fumbled around for two years and at that time, Right when I had started that company, I had met a girl and I was in a relationship for about, for a little over three years or yeah, just like, I think it was about, I forget now, but I'm pretty sure it was a little over three years. Um, And then we broke up in 2019. Uh, Literally, this is what's crazy. Like if you like were to calculate our official breakup, the only reason I remember this is because the year later on the same day I met you. That's wild. January 16th. Yeah, and if you were like to calculate, like that's crazy. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of what I did. Do you have any questions for me that the Van Fam might want to know? <laughs> well, no. And then in that last year leading up to meeting me, you. Oh, I well, we broke up. Oh yeah, so we broke up in January two thousand nineteen, and I was mo- never moved I did- to Hawaii together. Yeah, we moved to Maui together for a couple months, and then we ended up moving back. Part of me wishes I had stayed because I was fine there. I, I enjoyed it there, uh, but I don't think she was quite enjoying it as much as me. Um, but but anyways, if I hadn't sta- if I hadn't moved back, I wouldn't have met you, and so you know whatever. But I then we broke up, and then I kind of just like was going to go to Thailand in April 2020. But obviously, my plane my flights got canceled because of COVID and. So I was just kind of hanging out at my dad's house for a few months. Uh, I was trying to build a coaching business because I'm quite good at teaching people how to do a certain style of social media, but I don't like doing that. But it was like the only thing I had at the time. So I was doing that and I had a few clients and I was selling a $2,000 program and it was going well, but I just wasn't into it. You know, I, I was like... I just found myself not knowing what I was really, what I'm passionate about. And I'm, I'm learning that now as we do this and it's becoming clear, but there's still a lot of like, you know, how do I do, you know, like I said, talked about earlier, doing what I love, but also entertaining other people and finding that balance. But then in May, I may of 2020 or June of 2020, I moved to hood river, kited a lot, worked a little. (laughs) And then that, winter I went down to Baja and I we've been talking lately but like that time even though I wasn't like have didn't have fulfilling work going on that was one of the most amazing years of my life because you know there was so much connection that I made with people that I'm really close with now and that you know and That brought me down to Baja, which I might not have gone down to Baja without, you know, everything that led up to that point. So 
obviously, you know, you look back on your life and you're like, oh, well, if this didn't happen, I wouldn't be here today. And, but yeah. it's just interesting. And then that year in Baja, that winter in Baja, we just, it was such a special time and we'll never be able to recreate it. Yeah. It was, nor do we need to. No. It was definitely like the best, I don't know, best turning point in my life thus far. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so basically before I met Allie, I was in a really long relationship. I had a really good thing going on my own. And then it kind of all fell apart at the same time. And I think that money, like my business kind of falling apart led to my relationship falling apart because I kind of turned to some vices that weren't good. And I just didn't have a good good thing going at that point in my life. So, you know, I look back on that relationship now and I'm like, hey, that's, you know, we had a good, you know, great person. I have no hard feelings and it just wasn't meant to be. And, and I'm like, and I was never like sad, you know, once once we broke up, I was never sad that we broke up and she actually left me for another guy. So I was like, I was, I didn't even care. I was like, you know what? Like, that's just, I feel like that's probably the right call. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, yeah. And I got to hang out with my dad a lot that, that year. And it was like COVID had hit and it was just a weird time. You know, it was like this huge worldwide event going on and, yeah. Yeah, it's just a we I mean everybody lived through that. That was a weird time. But, you know, and now I've got we've got our first I think the best thing I've got going for me right now in my life is you, our daughter on the way in, you know, 9 weeks, 8 and a half weeks and like a a vision for what I want my life to be and like a kind of a blueprint of how it could get there and then just got to make it happen. Yeah. So what about you? That was a lot of you must have questions for me. Um, I'm just I feel like you covered it all. <laughs> all right, let's um, hear your story, Miss Vondering. Well, I after college, I went off traveling. I said seven years, seven continents, and I came back almost exactly seven years later, what? but only six continents. Ugh. And I moved to Lame. Bellingham on the last bit of my journey. I uh was sponsored i had a company sponsor me to drive from Mongo- england to mongolia and we drove all the way back but um in at the end of that i was sitting in oslo with like i don't know two not even two hundred dollars to my name and no way of getting back to the u.s and no where to stay nothing and The company reached out and said, do you want to come work for us in Bellingham, essentially, kind of like that. Anyway, so I gathered my belongings and I... Did you make them pay? Got... I needed some money up front, so I proposed (laughs) to them a project I do for them, which they didn't even end up using for anything, which kind of bumped me out. But anyways, (laughs) um, then I got out... To Bellingham, and I was like, wow. What year was this? Two, it was like five years ago. Okay. Six years 2018, ago. 2018, 17? Mm, 17, I think. Okay. And. Van Fam's going to need this time frame to 2017, line up. 2017, yeah. And I. Um, I actually started to really like it out there. I wanted to, I met some, a couple of friends. I met a really good mountain community up in Squamish. So that's who we went to go visit. I didn't meet so many mountain people in Bellingham, but I have a really lovely group of friends there as well. Um, and I just started climbing mountains and skiing my heart out and, climbing to the top of mountains and skiing down from them and I just got really really addicted to that and I started going on like different vacations ones where you like book a return ticket something I had literally I had never done that before I'd only just booked one ways like oh I'll just go to this country until the money runs out and um so that was wild for me and I was as equally as excited coming home to the Pacific Northwest as I was going on my trip. Hmm. So that was really cool to have found that 
in that location for myself because Washington's mountains are they're cream of the crop. Awesome. The best. So I like that, but I was starting to get a bit itchy and particularly like seasonal. Like the weather is a little iffy there sometimes iffy. of the year. <laughs> and it just, it was, iffy. I don't know. It was just kind of, I needed miserable some for change. about four months at least. And I was working and then using every waking moment to explore while I was not working. And I w- the job I was doing, the people I was working with, amazing. But I wasn't really making that much money and I didn't really have any opportunity to climb higher within the company or like grow. It wasn't very challenging. I wanted and saw all these opportunities for this company and nobody was really on board, nor did they have, I don't know if it was like budget or interest in it, but I wasn't really like able to kind of do what I wanted. So it wasn't a challenge in that yeah intriguing. not fulfilling you yeah but i stuck with them because they're amazing people and i would i mean if they asked me i, I don't know you if know, they asked you for a kidney you'd give them one <laughs> no no oh but um okay. trying I to just, gauge where we're at yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> well, well some of them maybe yeah yeah but um i just yeah i just realized that it wasn't i wasn't really into it anyway and then the pandemic hit well so i had then i I was single for like five years and then I met a guy who I started climbing mountains with and he was a fantastic adventure partner. And I think that's that's what I came to realization afterwards. We climbed mountains together, we kited, we surfed, we did all these things and he was safe and he was down to do all these things with me, you know, always interested. Um, and then I think... I kind of put everything else on the back burner because I was so excited to have somebody to do these things with, which I, I didn't have for five years. Or like I even sometimes I could, couldn't even find friends to do stuff with me. So it was really exciting to have him there eager all the time. Um, and so anyways, I had built my chalet. I was flat broke. And then I had to buy my van, Helen. And I was still flat broke. And then I had to just slowly build her out while I was, you know, making some more money. And every time I got a paycheck, I could put it right into the van. And then I had to wait for the next one, that type of thing. Um, And he, what was great is I, I think I wasn't ready for something really close. He lived in another state. So I was able to like go down, do some things, come back, work on my van. Um, Anyways... At the end of the van build, I took myself, I was like, I'm going down to Baja. I'm going to treat myself to a trip. I flew my mom out to California. We love mom. We love mom. I threw my mom, I flew my mom out to California. We went on this wonderful trip. We went to Yosemite and Sequoia and went to the coast and down to like She's my LA. mom too. Well, you know, I mean, mother-in-law. Right. But you, you call her mom. Dan calls her mom. We like that. And <laughs> um, anyways, I I was like, and I told my ex-boyfriend, I said, I'm going down to Baja. So he came with me. He was your current boyfriend at the time. Oh, he was my current boyfriend at the time. And I said, I, I wanted to treat myself to a, hang on, I got to back up. Cause back at the it start, up. <laughs> at the start of, so I'm with him. My van is done. And COVID hits, my van wasn't done, but anyways, COVID hits and my work cuts my job. And I basically, what I was doing was all online. So it was like, I think I'm, I feel like I'm the only one that shouldn't be cut right now. And I was almost kind of pissed at them for that because I was like, they just don't get it. Like the only way that we can still show face and everything is be online. Anyways, then they, a couple months later, they asked me to come back. But in the meantime, I started my own gap year coaching business, Mm. which was super fun. It was totally me. I really loved it. I actually had a lot of clients in the beginning because I think a lot of people lost their job or were on like a forced gap year or sabbatical. And a lot of people who knew 
who likes to travel, send her to Allie. And so it was like a lot of friends of friends at first. Um, So I didn't have to like advertise or go out looking for anybody. And so that was cool. I really liked that. But I realized that I couldn't make, I was spending a lot of time with these clients and I didn't charge a whole lot of money and I couldn't make (laughs) enough I couldn't scale it, Mm -hmm. essentially. Anyways, so then the company asked me to come back for them once like life kind of mellowed out. And I said, well, I'll come back a few days a week because I got this gap year coaching thing going on. And so I did that. Anyways, then I get myself out of debt, you know, after working all that summer and so on and so forth. And I fly my mom to California. We do the trip. My boyfriend at the time comes with me down to Baja. And I find out that after, I don't know if it was a year and a half or two years. Holy moly. That we were together. I didn't know it was that long. It was questionable because we started we met each other and did stuff for like six right. months and then you didn't become Facebook official for like <laughs> I don't think maybe. we ever did. But well, then <laughs> then you were never dating. Oh, okay. So we I guess we dated for six months and then if and then finally one day we said, Okay, let's become girlfriend boyfriend. I think it was a year after that. I don't know. He had mm. still been on dating apps and pursuing other people. Oh, not a good look. Ooh. And Spicy, though. Spicy. I found out. Ballsy, actually. And I said, very. I like the move, to be honest. Just can't get caught. Well, I'm serious. You just can't get caught. Show me your phone. <laughs> I told... We talked last week on the podcast. I don't do dating apps. <laughs> so... I found out and I said, okay, tell me everything. And I said, I, I'll try and see if I can deal with this. And I thought, you know, it didn't seem that innocent or it didn't seem that bad. And he was a really nice, he really is a nice guy. He's got a wonderful yeah. family. He, I think he will make a fantastic partner. I just think he made a mistake. And I think that it's because I wasn't the right person for him. Um, anyways, so I let it carry on for a few more months because we had just gotten Huck together, actually, although Huck was 100% my push. I was... You were pro-Huck. I was... I had been wanting Huck as the day I finished my van was the day I started looking at, um, dogs. Anyways, and, um, then, then I found out a couple months later when we were down in Baja, that he lied to me. So all the stuff of him still having the dating apps and only using it to find friends and never actually meeting up with anybody was a lie. And so, and I found that out in Baja, weeks before meeting Dan, that um, he lied to me. And that's just something I I couldn't push past. I could push past him making friends or... You know, whatever. Who, but I mean, the lies that he told, I, I just didn't like him Not anymore. to single out this guy because he is a really nice guy and I've met him. And he's a great guy. Yeah. Seems like a great guy. I don't yeah. know him that well. But yes. um, yeah, who who uses date? I mean, I know some people use dating apps to meet like friends, I guess. But it seems to be like something you would do if you were like, I'm a girl and I want to meet girlfriends. Like, I think my sister has used... Be, well, Bumble BFF or something like that to meet actual friends of like with that are other girls that she can go out with. And I'm not saying the, guys the and girls can't I be friends. The reason I believed him is because I it's just it's used very the app sus. when I got to Bellingham to make friends to make mountain friends. But I what would you? friend zone people immediately. Like people would know. <laughs> and you and sound I was like a lot of fun. Just meeting up with like good looking people. God, that would have pissed me off so much if you had friends zone me. What like, would I would have probably gotten violent, to be honest, in your van. Can you imagine Dan being in. violent? <laughs> I probably would have gotten my butt kicked by you. Yeah. So it just, anyways, so that's, so that happened beginning of December or like Thanksgiving time. And I was going to stay in Baja for a month. This is December 2020. Mm-hmm. We met in January 2021. So I stayed in Baja for a month. I ended up making a wonderful group of friends. Lifelong friend. <clears throat> friends. 
And I, he, that ex-boyfriend, he actually flew back down to see if we were going to make it work or not. And I just didn't like him anymore. I just, he, I was fine with him being around, but I just, I was like, no. There was no connection anymore? No, no, I, no. I mean, he slept in the van, but. And then a few weeks later, you met me. And then he left, and I was potentially going to go back to the States and meet up with him and go to, we were going to, I was going to move to Alaska, and he was very likely coming. He was working on getting his work to go up there. But I was going no matter what in my van by myself with my dog because I kept Tuck, obviously. Well, you you were going with both your dogs because it was his dog too, right? Right, it was both our dogs, but <laughs> I'm just kidding. but Huck was know, down was in Baja with crap. me and going to Huck was one hundred percent your dog because you did all the work to get Huck, right? Kinda. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, well, and then I met Dan, and I mean, I I felt bad. I had to tell the other guy, but he did it to himself, really. Well, that's you know, I mean, anyway, that's. That's the way life works, mm-hmm. you know. Some things are meant to be, some things aren't. And we ended up having a really amazing group of friends in Baja that were there, and we stayed for a month and a week after we met together. From So we were there for about five weeks together, and it was just one of the most special times, that time in Mexico. Um, especially, like, not like... January, February was pretty much the months I was there, and it was just so special. I mean, it really was. Um, I'll never forget those those two months. But yeah, that's that's kind of what we were up to, right? Yeah, and then we drove back together, and then uh, you and I did. You, you and I drove back to the Saved states a together. Saved on baggage fees. Dan did. My go-to joke. That's his joke, and I. <laughs> Um, I actually, I don't know. Well, I was going to go to Alaska and then Dan was kind of like, we're going to get there one day and well, we still haven't Wide been. But, um, <laughs> it's between you and I, Van Fam. Sorry. And, uh, I was going to go Sorry. buy property and build up in Alaska Kind of like what we're thinking of doing now. And I just I just wanted a place like I have in Bellingham in Alaska. Not for forever, but somewhere that I could rent out and then I could go and stay. I wanted ties to Alaska. I still want them. Of course. I think it'd be very cool. But the thing is about Alaska is like, I mean, it's, it's you know, and it's kind of like the same with Hawaii. It's so far away. Yeah, but you can drive there. <laughs> okay, but I know. I mean, you could take a boat to Hawaii you can take a plane to Hawaii you can you know you can get to Hawaii too but it's just so far away you know if like it's like that's what the thing about buying property in one of these places is it's beautiful and there's like there's stuff here there's stuff in Alaska like I, I look at Alaska and I'm like man I want to go up there and like I'd love to build and go salmon fishing all the time and have freezer full of food and like almost a mini homestead but it's like but you can't just like halfway homestead, you know, or like halfway do something like so that. So you're saying you want a homestead here and then no, never no, go no. to Alaska? No, I'm saying I want to, I'm saying like the what I, I want to do doesn't is not quite work. really yeah. something for us right now, but maybe in but the I future. S- yeah, like I watch a YouTube channel, I've briefly, I've watched a few videos, Simple Living Alaska that I was turned on to this summer and it's like really cool what they do. Yeah. They do some really cool stuff and they eat like the best fish, you know, it's Ooh. copper river, red salmon yeah. from, from the copper river. I mean, it's some of the best salmon in the world. So I just look at that and it's like, yeah, that, but we could just go up to Alaska and fish and be there for the summer. I'm just having a, a moment because we got, I got to kite on Friday You'll see that in the upcoming episode. We're teasing our episodes lately with the with the podcast because we're a little bit behind now. But um, I I I just kind of fell back. I just kind of really connected with the gorge again. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, every time we're there, it's the place that feels most like home. Right. For me. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Bellingham sure. does when my brother and his family are there. Yeah. I, I, It always will. But Hood River is the most like... Um, it's a community for us. Yeah. It's the, the friends we have there and being able to be just down at the event site where right. Dan was kiting and I talked to, you know, 10 people that I knew and just, yeah, it just feels like home mm-hmm. and where I want to be. Happy to be there, though, as hot as can be. And that is not something that I love. Hotter than Hawaii. But, um, but yeah, for like two months. And then that goes bye-bye. Yeah, that's true. Hawaii, uh, Hawaii is beautiful, but... It's a big but commitment. At the moment, there are no f- feasible right. property purchasing or house or anything purchasing options for our budget. And that's okay. Yeah. All right. We're going to do this. We're going to do what we want to do. And it might not be in our dream location i mean i wouldn't even consider the big island my dream location obviously you know i mean that's not no. news to anybody but um i guess you know we're going to do this and we're going to build up to one day you know i'm hoping by 40 of having like a really cool place that i that i can call home and can be like something i'm really proud of achieving you know and i'm i'm proud of every you know i i try and like be grateful for the things that happen in our life and the small things like you know i'm grateful for our van fam you know we don't have hundreds of thousands of subscribers and hundreds of thousands of regular viewers but we do have an awesome group of people that watch us and comment and you know we joke around about you guys when we're just together you know we're like oh this would make so and so laugh or remember when so and so said this and we like laugh so it's like I just always, you know, great gratitude is such an easy thing to overlook in this in in life because we live in especially in this day and age because we live like in a technological kind of <laughs> either utopia or dystopia. I don't know what which one it is. <laughs> it's it's somewhere Depends in the middle. Depends on what you use it for, I right. guess. Yeah. Yeah, and if you yeah exactly, and if you like compare yourself to other people, which we've all done then yeah, maybe you're going to feel like you're not doing enough and you don't have any, you don't have what other people have. But then I, then you look at what you do have and it's like, man, there's people that have it way worse than this. And I'm just really grateful for what I do have in my life. So that's kind of what we're, what we focus on. And we, dang it, we didn't do our gratitude statement at dinner. We had a really good thing going in McCall. Oh, yeah. We would switch off every night and we would, you know, we, you could call it a prayer or a, I just called it kind of like a gratitude a statement, a, you know, just just putting whatever is on our minds out into the universe, but really not like not making it about, oh, can you know, when I used to pray as a little kid, I would say like, the you know, I want a dirt bike. <laughs> that was like the number one prayer as a little I think kid. You wanted a dirt bike. Yeah, so bad. And never got answered. <laughs> but uh, but now it's like instead of doing that. I, I'm always like, well, let's just make it about gratitude. Like, what are we grateful for? What are we, what are we thankful that we have? And I think that's kind of the main, the, the more n- common practice. Yeah. Yeah. And grateful, looking forward to what we have to come. Obviously, in particular, our daughter. But, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's coming quick. I mean, we keep talking about it and it's it's coming right around the corner i know i see comments from people on youtube um i could name a few but like you see comments from people that are watching that watch our videos and our shorts and they're getting excited too so that's like you know it's a unique thing a lot of people don't i i think a lot of people have a stigma against sharing their lives on the internet and i think if you can like for me if I can bring people enjoyment and like give them either an escape or um, just like share my life and and bring joy or I guess happiness or whatever it is to other people through you know a simple camera and some editing software, that, that's something that fulfills me and that I, I'm pretty proud of. 
Yeah, and there are a lot of people who also don't think that you should bring your child, put your child on the internet because it's their life and whatever. Um, I'm I'm just not in it. It's not that I don't agree with them. I just I don't. We're really doing agree with that. it another way. Like we are. Her she will never be. <laughs> there will never be like photos or videos that are not in taste and i don't know if that didn't yeah. come out right but no, it's like did, did. we're not gonna like oh there's a lizard in here yeah there's a lot of them i saw that one earlier i think um and so that's fine that they believe that and they don't want to do that that's i don't that's wonderful i think that's, that's probably a majority of people for sure but a majority but of people... I, d- I don't feel scared about anything that could come of what we will be showing our family life. Yeah. And I love watching other families. So, right, right. I don't know. I don't think, you know, we're, we're going to do it. And... Well, I think, you know, we live a unique it's life. It's our choice because it's our child. Right, exactly. And I think we, you know, a majority of people kind of live, a, you know, a more traditional life. And so for them, it's like, you know, you might share stuff on Instagram or whatever with a small following of family and friends that you have. And that's that's cool, too. But to do it this way is, is you know, I, I, I agree with you completely. You know, it's got to be with a good, clean um intent behind it you know intent is such an important thing and i think that's what we need to hone in on and and maybe you know i think like maybe we don't even know where our channel is going to lead us and what our intent really is yeah i think right now the 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 biggest thing that i hope that any other any other person younger or older but mostly younger our age is that you you don't have to stick to that mold Mm -hmm. and stick to that marriage house kid one kid two you can if you want to but if you don't want to that there are other options that you do not have to do things in order or as society tells you to and that you can still travel and move around with kids and we hope yeah i mean what do we know but we this is what we we're hope. gonna try anyways well you can still do it while you're pregnant i'll tell you that yeah but with a lot of complaining <laughs> yeah kidding. for sure i i dan is uh no no i'm just taking a lot of the complaining but uh Hey, listen, I, if I had to listen to a little bit of complaining on a plane ride to Hawaii to get to enjoy a macadamia nut milkshake here in about Did half hour. Did I really hour, complain on the plane? A couple times. Yeah. I almost cried. My stomach hurt for the first flight. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, so you, you weren't complaining. It wasn't complaining. I'm just exaggerating. It was just you were uncomfortable. Yeah, mentioning the uncomfort <laughs> a couple times. I took a sleeping pill on the way here, and I was tired for like the first... Maybe two hours, if that. You were in and out, it seemed like. And then the trouble was, is I just had the, like, drowsiness. We couldn't fall asleep and couldn't get comfortable. And I was too tired to read a book, but I was almost too tired to watch a show, but I was still awake. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a little bit of a mistake. I'm not going to take a pill on the way back. I thought it well, would knock me out. We don't, we're taking a red eye back, which is we're land. We're getting back home at like 8 a.m. We're going to be like basically zombies and we don't have much time to spend recovering because we got family to see and tons of stuff to do, which you guys are going to see in the upcoming episodes. Yeah. Allie had a major score. Something crazy is going on for us and you're going to have to wait For the episodes. Yeah. But also, well, first thing when we get back, I need to go get baby Huckles. (laughs) We're going to have a lot of episodes coming out instead. You know, I I originally said like we would try to do like a content schedule. That just doesn't really work for us. I know the one thing we'll stick to is podcast every Tuesday. That we'll stick to. But I want to be able to kind of put out episodes as we see fit. And so, um, but we'll have quite a few coming out every couple days for the next little bit. I just finished editing one this morning. Independent. 
Yeah, always, always internet dependent. And power, power was out this morning. Yeah, we woke up and I was worried sick about my ice cream because it was in the freezer. And <laughs> Dan was like sweating about I, it when I, I came downstairs. Multiple messages to the host at like 5 a.m. I was like, hey, just checking in on the powers out. And we got some groceries. Really, all I cared about was the ice cream. And ooh, it just started raining. It's, it, it's so lovely in a house. I mean, guys, we'll, we, you'll see this airbnb we're staying at but it's just so lovely being in here but it would be a real challenge to build something this beautiful which I, we're up for a challenge but like man this is nice this is really cool they say the rain typically comes at the night here yeah which i'll sleep under rain it's one of my favorite things about sleeping in the van is when it rains really hard and you're just in the yeah. cozy van and you're like it either is, watching a show really together nice. yeah. or we're sleeping. Yeah. You know, I've woke up in Squamish so many times to really big rainstorms. So rain. And it was just like, oh, man, this is so nice. I, I mean, I feel like we, we've we got a we've got a definitely a, a, a pretty rigorous schedule coming up between our getting to Bellingham. <laughs> we've got this one thing coming up in November. Where you're going to give birth, <laughs> which is going to be insane. I'm Hopefully it'll happen in October. <laughs> late October. If you want to say that, you got to okay. put the late okay. part. But, yeah, we just got a lot going on. Um, do, do Let's get to current events, though. We've been rambling. We've been rambling. We're, I hope we haven't lost you guys yeah. in this. <laughs> hey, if you're still here, smash that like button. Yes. <laughs> okay, what so... What do you got on current events? They better be good. Well... I mean, something local that's happened here is the shark oh. attack on Maui's North Shore. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce Crazy Kiter sent us a comment, and I went and checked out the news story. So... And it was... I don't know exactly what beach it was at, but I used to live on the North Shore of Maui. Hi, I... In Paia? P-A-I-A? Oh, oh, that's where it happened? Yeah. Oh, so Baldwin yeah. Beach or Paia Beach? Yeah. Wow, that's like... A really nice, cool little part of town. It's uh, it's right up. So it was a French from, woman. Yeah, fifty-seven-year-old French woman on vacation. Yeah, and it sounded like she got bit pretty bad. But the what? I mean, she survived. Do do people normally survive shark bites? I don't know, but she's in critical condition. Shark attacks, at, critical condition. The hospital in Maui. Yeah, so uh, not sure if she's. Yeah, we haven't checked today, but um, well. So this, I, that's scary. I that's started to look, beach. and the thing. So they they now are having people stay out of the waters, or asking them to at least. It's crazy because it's unlikely that it's going to happen right again afterwards. Oh, well, what do I know? Yeah, seriously. So, are you a shark expert? <laughs> well, here I'm about <laughs> watch- to, here I'm about to give you some stats. Okay, sure, it's uh, the second. It's only the. Um, Okay, so it's the third attack this year in Hawaii in general. That's not very much, is it? I don't know. But it's 45% more than it was the year before. Well, so there you go, 45% increase. That's a lot. But they were showing this video of these great whites in, in the waters, not far from shore, but you'd still like maybe be out on your surfboard or paddleboard or something out there. And if you start going towards the shark, he'll run, he'll swim away. If you fall off your board, it will scare him and he'll swim away. And they have footage of this, like drone footage of this, of this sort of like commotion going towards the shark and the shark swims away. Hmm. Like a so, bear in a lot of cases. You know, oh, if you I fake th- charge a bear, they'll they run away. Okay. I mean, I don't know if they're scared, but they're startled. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's kind of how. After seeing that footage, I actually feel safer around sharks than I do bears. <laughs> well. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? I mean, I'm. I. Yeah, I don't. I don't feel safe around either of them, but <laughs> I'm less worried about a shark attack. I'll put it that oh, way. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm less worried about a shark attack. Maybe everybody is. I don't know, but um. The, it was just interesting to see the sharks actually go away. So, like, I've fallen off my surfboard so many times that I'm, like, scrambling to get back on it. And I'm such a freak that I put my legs, my feet up in the air 
Mm-hmm. Just in case one comes by, I don't want it to nibble my foot. It just, just doesn't look like they're really going to do that. But I wonder what this woman was doing. Do, do we know what type of shark it was? No, I don't think so. I know so. my friend uh, who used to live on Maui kited right over a tiger shark once. And they can attack. Sure. Um, so, I mean, I've been out there kiting. I, I will tell you this. If you've never kited in the ocean, it's a whole different beast. But especially, like, we would go out at Kite Beach on Maui, and you can go really far out. And you're out there, and the water is deep blue, and you're dark. way... Yeah, I mean, yeah, dark, like, ominous. Why would you go out there, then? Just, you just go out there, and it's just, you do it. I don't know. And, and you don't I get mean, bit by a shark. I haven't yet. <laughs> But I don't feel that comfortable out there. I'm like, you hightail, you go out there. One time we did a downwinder. I, I don't want to get too into kite talk, but we went basically. You, you went under. We we kited underneath the flight path of the airplanes, mm-hmm. and you're supposed to go two miles out from shore if you're going to do that. So you're not like getting your kites tangled with an airplane taking yeah. off, like a seven thirty seven. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And these planes were like you they were coming in, they were taking off over us way overhead, but still it was really scary. And we were so far out just to be safe. And it was very scary. I mean it was just it wasn't scary, it was just like uneasy. Yeah, yeah. It's just a weird feeling like da no 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 whatever Ominous that Jaws feeling. song is yeah. playing in the back of your head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I I mean a lot of the it's like learned just from like the movies and everything of shark attacks. I mean, they're real. I just, yeah, they're very uncommon. Let's get to another current event. What do we got? Okay. So another thing that is wild and super tragic is the woman who was out for a run in Memphis, oh, man. Tennessee. Yeah. She's running at 4 a.m. She's two kids. She's a teacher. So she was probably She's- going like before it gets hot. So she could get back in time to take care of her kids before she went to work. You know what else is crazy is her grandfather is very, very wealthy. She's the heiress to like, a, I want to say, a, I don't know if it's a billion dollar fortune, but it's a huge fortune. He's, so he started some is that company that sells stuff and they did three billion in reven, revenue. No, I don't. I mean, maybe. What do I know? I don't. I have no idea. Well, they, the guy that went after her is a career criminal. Um, he's a guy that, you know, has been in jail for 20 years, let out. And then now it I mean, it, it would appear that this woman is probably not alive at this point. Well, so they've just found a body who that is unidentified. I think they did say that it is a female. Uh, very likely her uh, led to some DNA on some flip, fl- you know. The, well, what happened was... There's nothing confirmed, but it sounds like it's basically her. I haven't heard about that yet, but, but I haven't looked at it today. But yeah. they, they had footage of, um, I think the guy, he's probably a huge idiot from what it sounds like he left his sandals at the scene of the crime and they were able to trace it back to him and i think he, they also had him on footage or something not there entirely was, there sure. was footage of him he gets out of his suv and he goes up to her and he brings her back really oh my gosh that's crazy and oh my lord oh it's just so sad thinking about it and he brings her back and then um goes and then somebody saw him acting weird at his brother's house washing his clothes and i think it was his, his own car. brother said that his brother said he was being really weird oh i'm pretty sure and the vehicle belonged to somebody that he lived with anyway so they basically know oh they got this guy dead to rights the cur- the killer and it's i think they've basically found her body jeez Nothing That's is so confirmed, sad. but can never like, be too what, safe. What was he? Why her? Like what? Just wrong place, wrong time, or did he like know that somebody was going to be up running at that time? Like, you know, it's like so creepy. Like, had he watched her? Was he after her? We don't know what. Type or was of he just up he all was. night and was just like first person I see? I'm going to murder. Man. 
that super, is, super sad and very scary. That's why, you know, you got to live in a safe area. You got to know your neighbors. You got to, you got to always kind of, in this country, you got to kind of watch your back, you know? Yeah. And, and that's why, like, I'm, you know, cities for me, big cities, are just not a place you want to be as much as you could in the past. Um, yeah, I and maybe that's stupid to say, but it's a generalization, I guess. But I, I just mean, feel there's so many. There's also some tweakers out in the countryside that do really weird stuff. You're just, there's less of them and you have a lot more space in between you right. and them, you know? Right. Yeah. I tend to, I tend to get on well with people that live out away from cities better you know they they tend to be a little more grounded in reality yeah i would say and they kind of have a, a different focus on what's important versus like in if you're in a city a lot of times you can get caught up in the rat race and you know you you get caught up when all these you know maybe there's riots going on or whatever in the city especially if you live in a city like portland so um i mean i can tell you this portland since I had lived there for 10 years, about 8 to 10 years. I don't know the exact amount of time. Going back to the story we told you guys early on about our past. That's I was living in Portland that whole time, except for the New York time. And all the way up to 2019. And it was it gradually deteriorated. And then after 2020, it just went to absolute like crap. It's just so different now it does it's so much less safe portland used to be so clean and i feel like people are happier so yeah well it's been an hour it's been an hour guys you know what that means <laughs> ali's ready for bed no i've just i just wanted to you want to you throw know. that out there well so yeah I, portland i i wish i didn't have as bad things to say about it but it is not an ideal place to be. I mean, yeah. I, I did not like being there. Somebody stole stuff off of our van when we were there for a few hours. hours out for dinner. Um, I did not feel comfortable walking in the dark at night, uh, even if it was only like 7 p.m. Sure. I Everywhere Sketch. you drive, there is just like tent cities everywhere. Oh, They used to never have that. I'm sure there small, are still really lovely parts of Portland, just like there are of uh, any city. But Portland, for some reason pockets. in particular, has really been hit with. Well, it's you know, it's it's politics. It's people can get away with it, so that's what happens, you know. But uh, guys, we are one hour into our podcast. The podcast format is this is episode number five, so this is our last full length podcast. That's on youtube and spotify and um all the other podcast apps if you want to going forward if you want to hear the full podcast we hope you do we hope it's entertaining um you're gonna be give we do a freemium model basically which is half on podcast apps and youtube and the other half the second half which who knows maybe it'll be a little more risque maybe it'll be a little more controversial you know, will be on Patreon. So our Patreon is just patreon.com forward slash Allie and Dan. Really simple to find. Really, I think it's really, you know, if you want to, if you like, if you appreciate our, our work and you want to look for a way to support us, we feel like that's one of the best ways to do it um, because it's, it can be a pretty low cost, I think. I use Patreon to support other creators that have podcasts that I want to get access to their free, their second halves on. So I think it's a good idea. Yeah, we're going to try it out, and we hope to see some of you on Patreon. And also, of course, reward the Patreons that we already do have. Yeah. We think that they will They've been keeping up well. with us on, yeah. in Hawaii. Um, and so we um, – what was I going to say? We'll link that in the description, and then we'll obviously do that for the next podcast. But thank you so much for listening today. And we appreciate you very much and look forward to seeing you in some upcoming vlogs. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next episode. We'll see you on the internet, as you know. Bye-bye. Adios.